In the year 1865, Maxwell came up with his equations for the propagation of light and how light behaves. And we concluded that it was an electro electromagnetic waves at the time. Now, Einstein, based on that idea, came up with a bunch of findings, and one of them was the famous equation E equals mc squared. Now, E equals mc squared is also known as the mass-energy equivalence, the idea that mass and energy are both interconnected. This equation right here is the reason nothing moves faster than light. I mean, it implies that. But how is that so? You see, like I said, this is a mass-energy equivalence, which means if one increases, the other one will increase too. Now, let's say we want to speed up an object, for example, by pushing it. What we need is energy to push that object for it to become faster. Energy is measure, measured in joules, by the way, if you want to understand more about joules and energy, I made a video about that, you'll find that up here. But, like I said, let's say we are moving an object to make it speed up. What we need is energy. Now, the energy that an object has and gains due to its speed will contribute and add to its mass. And this is the critical idea here. When an object is moving, the faster it goes, its mass increases because the energy that caused it to speed up is increasing. Remember, there is a relationship between mass and energy. But here's the catch. When an object speeds up, the mass doesn't increase linearly. It actually increases exponentially. What that means is, the faster it is, the mass increases, not just double, it keeps increasing and skyrockets the faster it goes, and there's actually a graph for that. I'm gonna share with you the graph, but here's an example. When an object is moving at 10% the speed of light, the mass of this object will increase by half its original mass only. But once you get to 90% the speed of light, the mass of the object would have already become more than twice its original mass. Now, once you approach the speed of light, the mass will, it would have increased so much that it became practically infinite. Now, when mass increases, it becomes harder to speed the object up because of its mass. What is an object that's harder to speed up? is basically an object that needs more energy to speed it up. And this is why, like I said, mass and energy are interconnected. So as mass increases, you need more energy. And when mass becomes infinite, you need an infinite amount of energy to speed it up approaching the speed of light, which is impossible. You cannot have an infinite energy, obviously. And this is basically the reason Nothing can move, nothing with mass can move with the speed of light. This basically explains it. An object can never, in fact, reach the speed of light because by that time, what caused it to speed up will cause its mass to become infinite. Now, I know this is, can be a little bit confusing, but here it is really, really simple. Mass and energy are related with E equals mc squared. To speed up an object, we need energy. Speeding the object will add to its mass, which means we need more energy because of the relationship here. To get to the speed of light, the mass would have become infinite. This means we need infinite energy and that cannot be provided. Thanks again for joining me today. I hope this made it clear and I hope at least you get the principle of the implication of the equation and its contribution to the fact that nothing can move at the speed of light. Like this video and share it, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell button so that you'd know the next time I have something to say, which is probably next week. I'm back to the normal schedule where I upload once a week. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. I'm out. It followed from the special theory of relativity that mass and energy are good, are quite different manifestations of the same thing. A somewhat unfamiliar conception for the average mind. Furthermore, the equation E is equal mc squared, in which energy is put equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light, showed that very small amount of mass 
may be converted into a very large amount of energy, and vice versa. The mass and energy were, in fact, equivalent. According to the formula mentioned above, this was demonstrated by Kokra and Walton in 1932 experimentally. 